Are you recording this? Hey, Kenny and Claude. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got a lot of new faces here, a lot of new faces. Uh, if you get a chance, you want to introduce yourself again, you know, so, and, uh, and Claude and how, you know, they, they don't know you. They're like, I, I talk about Kenny yeah. all the time, but they don't know you, no. Yeah, I've been um, trading options for four years, been in the market for five, so, um, no, six. I've been in the market since 18. Um, yeah, this, I mainly trade options now. That is what I do. But I trade options on futures, but I also trade on stocks too. Yeah. And, uh, and Claude, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? I'm... Yeah, I... Uh... Probably been been in the game since '08, uh, around the housing crisis, and uh, you know, trade stocks, trade options. Uh, I'm not as intense as Kenny, but uh, we share a lot of the same principles and a lot of the same ideas. Is that me? Yeah, Rise. and and Huff is the the other person in the room. Uh, Huff. Finally, we can hear, see you. How you want to introduce yourself real quick? Oh, I'm just Huff, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm nobody special. I've, I've been trading since like 2021. Uh, I've blown up two accounts, so I can tell you exactly what not to do. <laughs> uh, and now I'm, you know, a lot more consistent with it. So yeah, my guys, Kenny and Claude, are getting me even better. Yeah, so let me let me give a quick background for those who don't know this. Um, when I came into the investment scene, you know, I don't have any background in this stuff at all, and so I start buying into uh, Tesla, uh, and I start making video about Tesla, and I just I was just excited, but I have no idea how they make money. I thought I literally thought they were doing day trading for me. I have no idea what option trading is, and I own a so thing about I, I own it for a while until somewhere around July and uh, well in August is when Kenny called me up. When and when we and and when he called me, it wasn't like he called me on Discord voice, you know. So it's not even like text message and say, "Hey man, let's talk about this." He called me up and we and we start talking. And and at first I thought it was like, "Man, this got to be a scam." Like who like who the heck is calling me? But one thing we have in common is, you know, we're both in the military. We're both military men. And so when we start talking and then when talking about each other's background, that's when that's when I, you know, I, I was realized, like, he knows what he's doing. He's he's trying to help me. He's not he's not here to, to uh, you know, uh, troll me or anything like that. Now, that's why I was worried about it because I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea about option trading. And the funny thing is I was on my way on a date and uh, and and – and, you know, I thought it was going to be like a quick five, ten minute thing, but it ended up being a four hour conversation. And then I went to the date. I came back. I went home. I still talk about it. It was just crazy. And, uh, yeah, me and Kenny, ever since, you know, we we've been on this bandwagon from the very beginning. And uh, I I totally admire him, like mad respect, you know, because because he look at investment like. I don't know. It's like another level. At another, I, I just can't explain it. This is like watching Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant playing, and uh, and it's just unbelievable looking at it from from that perspective. You know, uh, he understand investment very well. He understand option trading very well. He understand the market very well. Um, and so when he talk about Tesla, he start explaining about Tesla, how option works, about call and puts and stuff like that. I was just lost, completely lost. But the combination between Claude and and Huff, they used to they used to give this clinics, you know, uh, to all of us, you know, and uh, and anytime that you need help, you can ask them. These guys hang out on our Discord, so you could just ping them and flag them and just say, that, hey, uh, I have a question about this and that, and then they they can help you. Uh, one thing I learned about the option trading community, I couldn't believe how friendly they are, you know, how how cheerful they are, how excited they are to help you. Uh, it you know, it, it it's the opposite. I, I I imagine you know the you know these traders they they very uh, they they're, they're to themselves you know they're essentially solo. They're operating a solo vacuum. No, but they they really want to help you. They uh, and because this is one of those things that 
your success, their success, all of the success. And Clark keeps saying this, that somehow every time he explained these things, he keep learning. It's like he's been doing it like more than 20 years. I'm like, how would you keep learning? But apparently you, they still keep learning. Is that correct, Claude? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm going to open the volley here up and just start get the conversation going. Um, but if you guys have questions, uh, just by all means, you can ask any of these experts here. All right, so the first question I have, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. It's just basic cover, um, basic cover and call. Uh, and so how yield max make money, you know, they do essentially synthetics. But we're just talking about, let's say they don't do synthetic. We just do just like clip, for example. So they own, the company owned, they go buy the stocks. They buy like K clip, they buy K-Web, they own the stocks. Now they have the stock. They have, let's say, a million sh worth of share. So the val the stock price of that stocks is going to be matched to the underlying. So Clip and KWEP, they're going to go with each other because they own the stocks. And uh, so the price is going to match it with that. But when what what Yieldmax does is Yieldmax, they, they do synthetic. So they replicate that, that stock. They don't own the stock by them, by them buying call and put Oh, I'm sorry, sell, I, I, I got confused the word call and buy or sell. By them doing uh, call and put, they essentially replicate owning that stock. Um, and I don't, I don't, do you guys understand that at, at this point? I, I, I might make it too simple to, to, I'm about to get to the question. All right, so, so that's how Yield Max does it. They, they do synthetic and they do, and they create this, uh, they essentially create a synthetic version of the stock they're going to own. So in, in, in a Tesla, Tesla example, now they own Tesla. Okay. So, but they own it, like say, for example, a 185 price. And there's, there's, I think there's currently one right now, they're 185 and they're 210 or 221. And uh, so that's, that's their, their, their stock and they use that to do that's their long trade and then their short trade which is weekly trade and that's what you see that's what we talk about all the time retired dividends and all those guys that's what we track is the weekly trades all right um i have a question on put but then there's uh, kenny and claude there's a whole bunch of people who actually have question on cover call but the reason i brought you up here is on put this is the first time that i experiment with put because i i thought the, the basic concept is that if you want to own the stock, I want to own Tesla, uh, I want to own it. So that means, it, let's say it's 175 right now. If I want to own it, I, I should just put for 175. Yes, you can. That but, is basically what it is. A put is yeah. the right to buy, the right to sell shares at a given strike price. So if you sell... So the person who buys the put, they can sell their shares. The person who sells the put, they're agreeing to buy the shares at that price. So at 175, I'm looking at the option change for Tesla right now. So 175, the bid is the ass is 227, $2.27. So if there's two ways to buy to buy stocks. You can just go buy in the open market, like what we've been doing with your broker. You, you go get twenty thousand dollar put in the side, and you just go and click on Tesla, buy Tesla, limit order, and for one seventy five, kabam! This this Tesla will be in your in your window. Now that's if you want to buy one or two, but if you want to buy a hundred share, that's what we're talking about because a contract is one share. If you want to buy a hundred share, it's best to do the put because. You, you not only you get the 175 you get the stock but then you're gonna get the money you get two two dollar and 27 cents which is the ask price uh, let's say, let's assume that it's fill so you get two dollar and 27 cents time 100 um, that's how much you get in addition to your to your stock of 175 did, did that explain better I'm Yes, so when you sell the put, 
you agree to buy at that price and you get paid a premium to wait and your risk time. If the stock goes down there, you have to buy it at that price. If the stock doesn't go down there, you hold on to the premium and it's yours. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is, I have a whole bunch of questions, uh, but the first question is, is how, I want it now, I want to exercise now. How do I exercise? Is it, is like Charles Schwab going to tell me or, or how, how do I know? So, so it see. depends on your broke. Depends on your broker, you'll have a button All right. that you can push to exercise. If you're the seller, you can't exercise anything. If you're yep. the buyer, depends on your broker, you could right-click the position and there'll be a button that says exercise. I don't know how swab works. Oh, wait. If I sell put, I can't exercise it. No, you cannot exercise it. Oh. The only, if that. you sell the put, the only thing you can do is buy it back or let it expire and then you get exercise. As a seller, you cannot exercise anything. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Exercising. So, oh, go, Claude. So as a, as a buyer, remember, buyers of options have rights. Sellers of options have an obligation. Keep that in mind. So there's a... Oh, I totally confused. Really, really confused. Because, you know, you know Claude, we, we've been doing cover calls, sell... Uh, I mean, call. I sell. I sell. I sell call. Uh, that's how I've been doing it with Rivian and so far for the last two three months. But it, when it, you correct. in this case, and, and in a cover call, yeah, because you sell your call, you are obligated to do something. Yeah, and and in your case, that obligation is to release those shares at a specific strike. That is your obligation as a seller of an option. All right. C can you give us an example? Like, uh, like. Uh, so you buy, what is this, an option chain to Tesla right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're looking at Tesla March 8th. So right let's now. just say you got Tesla shares. You buy Tesla shares at $160 and you bought them, you know, two years ago. Yep. And let's just say you went out and at the time it was a leap, but now here it is. You got two days till expiration, which you see this here option chain right here. Yep. Okay. And let's just say you sold the 172.50. All right. Okay. So what that means is that since you sold that call option, you are obligated to give up your shares when the buyer of that option decides to exercise or at the time of expiration. So that means you bought them at 160. Currently right now it's at 175.28. If I was on the other side of your trade, mm -hmm. I would exercise and take those shares off of your hands at 172.50. Okay. That's how, that's how you did it with Neo. Yep. That's how you did it with SoFi. Yeah. So wh why is put different? I guess I'm confused on that. Why? 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 I so, thought so, I thought by selling put I can exercise it. No. So. The put is mainly designed as insurance. So if you have one, you have your shares of Tesla, it's at 175 mm -hmm. and you're scared as shit that it's going to fall. Mm -hmm. So a person will buy a put for $2.20 because they're scared that Tesla will fall to 160 So with them buying the put, they have a right, right? They can sell those shares to the guy whoever sold them the put at 175 even if Tesla goes to 150 because they have a put so it goes back to the basics of the options right it doesn't matter call or put you as the as the buyer you have the right to buy or sell shares at a design strike right so you have the right as a seller you are obligated to sell or buy buy the share at that strike 
So the buyer is not obligated at the end of right before the, the option expires, he can just close the option, sell it back to the market maker and get out of the trade. He doesn't have to buy the shares as a seller. You can buy back the option and take a big take a loss or you can wait and get the shares if it's in the money. So what I was trying to do is I want to be able to exercise it. So you well, cannot exercise unless you buy. Okay, so I have to be a buyer. So I have to set up as a buy. Yes. Okay, so so once uh, one seventy five. Let's say it's one seventy five, and I want to buy at one seventy. All right. Mm hmm. And so so I would just go select. Let me just let me just go through the option here. So I would go to select uh, one seventy put, and I would buy to open. Nope, but. Remember when you're a buyer, if the stock doesn't go to 170, you lose all that money. If you're a buyer and you buy that option, you're going to spend money to buy it. And if the stock doesn't go to 170, you're going to lose money because you're buying premium. So you got to be right. Wow. How would you, why would somebody want to be a buyer then? Because I just told you for insurance. Because you already have the shares or you're speculating. Uh -huh. Two reasons. You think Tesla is going to 100, so you're going to buy the puts, right? Yeah. And then the other reason is you're scared that Tesla is going to fall, so you're buying the put as insurance. Remember we talked about those yeah. um, hedge funds and whoever? Yeah. They need to buy insurance. They need to buy insurance. Right, whatever their percentage is that they guarantee, whatever company they're trading for. So they say they guarantee five percent. You're mm -hmm. always gonna buy puts five percent out of the money. So if if I own a hundred share of Tesla, Tesla already, yes. And let's say let's say I uh, the price is the the price is one seventy five right now. Yep. And and I bought it one seventy five. Obviously, I'm breaking even, but it, this thing is scary going down. So I should just buy put. This is what I mean. This you don't have to buy any put, but if you if you, if you feel it's going down and you want to buy insurance, then you buy insurance. Okay, so I I buy insurance for one seventy. So it's only five dollar different. I'm just giving an example here. Yep. So one seventy. My my value my stock is one seventy five, and I buy for one seventy. So what happened when the price hit one seventy? Nothing. You own the contract. So unless you push exercise, nothing is going to happen. Nothing happens. It's only There's only two times something happens. Whenever you exercise the contract or the contract expires in the money. So if the contract expires in the money, your shares is going to go to that guy and you're going to get the cash. I don't understand why I don't understand this. I literally don't understand this whole concept right now. I thought I understand it, but you guys just you guys just literally flipped my house upside down. Mm -hmm. I okay, don't look at it like this. With the scenario that Kenny had, right? Yeah. Do you have the shares at 175? Mm -hmm. You have this option that this put option that you bought. You bought, which means you got the right to do something. You got the right to take some kind of action. Yeah. So here's the scenario. Tesla, and we're going to put some fictitious time on this here option. Let's say you got 60 days on this option, okay? And you pay, what is that right now? 81, 80, no, 81 cents. All right? You paid 81 cents for it. Now let's fast forward to five and a half months. Like I said, we put six months on this option, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward to five and a half months. We almost had expiration. Tesla is sitting at $100 even. Okay. Everybody's in a panic. But you're sitting. In your account, you have sitting in your account the shares which are down almost $75. Yep. You agree with that? Yep. Okay. 
And you also have this here put option that is your insurance, your way out, if need be, if you want to bail. Oh. Now, you have two choices to make. You have two choices to make at this point. Yeah. You're looking at your account and you're looking at your 100 shares is down $75. Your put option at that point, if it's down at $100, your put option that you bought at 81 cents might be close to $70 at that, at that time. Okay, so you have two choices that you can that you can do. You can either sell that put option for cash, because it would it's an insurance policy that now has increased in value, because the underlying asset Tesla has dropped down to a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Or you can go ahead, like Kenny said. You can either do one or two things. Call your broker if you don't have the ability to exercise it in your platform. <laughs> you can call your broker, and I think for maybe 15 bucks. What they will do is they will exercise your option, and instead of selling it at open market value of $100, they're going to sell it at $170. Because you got the contract at $170. Yes. All right. Which means your loss is really from 175 down to 170, oh. not down to 100. I I, I think I, I got it now. Okay, right. holy cow! This is like this is like like you, people don't you don't realize how you, you guys are easy because you do this all the time. This is like mind boggling. Okay, so six months ago I bought six months ago, not March age, you know. So six months ago I bought a six months contract. Uh, I have I have Tesla stock. I own the stock, and so mm -hmm. when you buy put, you essentially putting your stock on 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 the on the on the option table. An insurance plan. No, you put like insurance up. Insurance. Insurance. You're buying insurance yep. so if Tesla falls. So how much? How much am, am I? How much am I paying? Six months ago, am I paying the? Let's say one seventy five is the. Whatever the price going is, we'll just say let's just say a thousand dollars. Back when Tesla was at two fifty, all right, right. You're paying a thousand dollars to insure it at one seventy for six months, just like how your car is, right? Yeah. You're paying you're paying that and, premium. And when for you say the insurance is the premium, is this this number I'm seeing on the right side here? Yeah, that's a premium, right? Yeah. So the premium is basically you're paying a premium because you're buying insurance. And the total premium for hundred con for hundred contract two fifty. Let's say it's it's a thousand dollar. Yep, because we're up at two fifty, right? It's a thousand dollars. Yep. So now you're insured, so it doesn't matter how low Tesla goes, you're you have the right to sell your shares at 170. So it doesn't matter if Tesla goes to ten dollars, whatever it is, you have that contract, and that contract is guaranteed. As long as you exercise before the expiration date. Even if you don't exercise, if it's in the money, your broker is gonna exercise it. Oh. If the option stops, if it ends in the money, your broker is automatically going to exercise it for you. If it's one penny in the money, he's going to exercise it. Wow. Which you're, yes, he is going to exercise it. And okay. he's going to take your shares and give it to that guy. And the money is going to come back into your account. You're just going to wake up and it happened. And therefore, therefore, Tesla is at at a hundred dollar, like Claude said. Yep. But guess what? I am. You, you're selling your shares for one seventy. I sold I sold my share for one seventy. I'm, I'm good. That is what when you buy the options. So those and, are the people and who I got buy out options. of. I got out of the Tesla business. I because I sold all yep. my share for one seventy. I'm done. But at least I got the cash. I didn't take the one hundred. I did. I didn't sell at one hundred at a loss. Yes. So. When you look at it, it's people who are buying insurance yeah. or people who think Tesla is going down. Those are the people who are buying the option from you when you're selling. People who are buying insurance and people who think Tesla is going down. This is this is put buy. This is put buy. You're, you're a buyer in the put section on the put side. Yep, that's what they do. So on the selling side now is... I think Elon is going to come out with a flying dog and it's going to the moon. Oh, oh. Hold on, Kenny. Take that same scenario that you just described yeah. and now apply it to the call side. Six months ago, okay. Tesla's at $100. Explain yeah. that part to him, Kenny. 
Yep, so six months ago, Tesla is at $100. All right. Right? And you think Tesla is not going up. Right? You think Tesla is going to stay at $100. So you sold the 170 call right. for $1,000. And now we're here and Tesla is at 175 So that call that you sold is probably going to be worth around $2,000. Your share just went up. 75 right because it was at a it was at 100 your shares went up 75 so the contract is ending you have two options one you leave it alone and let them take your shares and sell them at 170 because that's the contract that you sold or you close the call take a loss on the call but then take the profits on the shares so as a seller that is what you do. As a buyer, the guy who bought that contract, he's sitting pretty because his contract is five dollars in the money. Because he has the one seventy and we're at one seventy five right now. So he's sitting pretty. So if the contract expires today, he can exercise it yeah. or he can close it. If he doesn't do anything, the broker's automatically going to take the shares from you and give to him. If so the contract expires in the yeah. money, the contract will be exercised. Doesn't matter if it's a call or put. If it expires in the money, it will be exercised and those shares will move from one person to the other. Okay. Now, this is probably going to be sound repetitive, but I got, I got to go step by step. So on the buy put, uh, it's pretty much insurance. I, I think I understand that now. Yep. If you're buy, buying, you're buying for insurance on a put side. But on a buy call, what, what are you doing? What, what's the strategy? You're speculating. So if you're a buyer of a call, you're speculating. You, I'm speculating that this thing is not going to go up. No, that it's going up. Oh, you speculate it's going yes. up? Yes. Yes. So if you're buying a call, you're speculating it's going up. All right. So this is a good example. A so it's here's 175 right now. Let's say it, I let's say it, I'm assuming this thing going to go up next week. Next week, uh, to 200. And so I'm buying a contract. I'm buying the 175 contract or I'm buying the 200 contract. Whichever one you want to buy, that's how much money you want to spend. For me, I'm broke, so I would probably buy like a 180 keep, call. So, so, so keep the same numbers. Keep the uh, same numbers. Right. Six months ago, yeah. Six months ago, the option, the the shares that you have of Tesla at a hundred dollars. Yep. I take that back. You don't even got shares. Yep. You don't got shares. A Tesla's trading at a hundred dollars. Yep. Six months ago, you buy the one seventy call right. option, which would be I don't even know how many deviations that would be out of the money, but that's like super out of the money. Yeah. Way out of the money. Now, do you look at it today? Tesla is at one seventy five. Yeah. Okay. By you buying. The 170 call. Yep. This allows you to not have to go into the open market and buy it at 175, but to buy it at 170 when you exercise the call option. Oh, it's not 100. Well, if you bought, like Kenny said, if you want to buy a 100 or a 110, you can do that. But that's what you want to do. If you want to buy, if you if the current price is a hundred dollars. And you want to buy a 110 and the price shoots up six months later to 175 and you still got time on that option mm -hmm. you can exercise that call option and the market maker will allow you to buy the shares at that 110 dollar amount where everybody else has, has to, to pay the 175 market, current price pay the 175 yep ah so it's like the, layaway okay so yeah like layaway oh, okay so that's a good example so right now it's 175 we think like three months from now, this thing probably go up to 250, okay, for example. So I'm gonna go all the way to June, I'm gonna say, I'm, but I don't want the 250 price, I want the 175 price at, at 220. Oh, I wonder how much that costs. Let me just scroll down real quickly. Uh, let's say, uh, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go expiration date all. All right, let's say I'm going to June, June 21st, 107 days out. So I'm gonna do the, buy option call 
All right, so if I do June in the call, one. You're going to have to change your strike shown from eight to maybe 16 or something. So we think it's going to go to 250. Let's say, for example, we're going to, let's say it's going to go to 250. Do I buy the 250 one? Or I, so I would buy the 250 one. No. If you're thinking it's going to go all the way to 250, you want to buy something that's closer to the price action right now. Oh, so, let's so, just so 175. Yeah, so you buy 175. So I buy 175, it would be $13.55 uh, right now. Right. Okay, so I, I own this contract. I buy it, 175. I own this contract. I pay 13.55. That's roughly how much is that? I'm sorry. $1,300.50. $13. Yep. $1,300. Yep. But $1,300, all right? Yeah. So so for $1,300, I put that as like a layaway. It's 175. So, but okay, so how how do I set for June? I, I guess I don't get, I don't get that part. How do I get for two? So, so when when <clears throat> so if you decide to purchase that, I'm sorry, that's you wrong were day. to uh, June. Here you go, June one seventy five. I'm sorry, that was the wrong price, wrong date. One seventy five. It's okay. twenty dollars. So it's about about two thousand dollars. All right. So you buy that at two thousand dollars. All right. And let's just say first week of June. Yep. The shares are at two hundred and fifty dollars and some cents. Yeah. You have two choices that you can make because you know that within a couple of weeks that option is going to expire, right? Yep. Or be exercised. You can do one of two things. Like Kenny said, do nothing and it'll be exercised automatically. Or you can take that option and sell it for the cash profit because at that point that $20 option will then be worth roughly $75. Wow. Yeah, because I have a hundred, because if I exercise it, I will own 175, I, I will own a hundred share of Tesla, but it's $175, not at two, at 250. Exactly. Ah, that's why somebody want to do a. That's why somebody want to be a buyer. So essentially, he's spending. I, I'll spend two thousand dollar at this price right now. If Tesla's going to the moon in the next six months, uh, next three months, and uh, to June, one hundred seventy days. If we go to the moon in one hundred seventy days, um, one. If I want to own Tesla, I can. I, I will get it for one hundred seventy five. That's way cheap. But right. or if I don't want to own Tesla, I just want the cash, I can sell that contract and I will get essentially not $20, but I, yeah. I would sell it for $75 yeah. or something like that. Yep. That's why you want yep. to be a buyer. Okay, that, that's all like good money. Why don't people, more people do the buying thing? Because they do. a lot of people, a lot lot of people, people buy. buy. Oh, okay. Holy cow. So well, remember when you're buying, it's either you're right or it goes to zero. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, wait, let's let's worst case scenario. What happened if let's say 175 in June and the price went up to it didn't go up, it just went 175 again. Let's say for example, what happened then to you? You lose all you lose all the money you you used to pay. I for lost it. a two thousand dollar layaway that I put in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and the other trader, which would be Kenny. Who sold it to you would reap in those would reap in that cash. Ah, uh, what happened if it go didn't go to two fifty like I wanted? But let's say it only go up to two twenty. So if it if went you, to two twenty, then basically you do the math on the intrinsic value on on the oh, intrinsic value. Okay. So that'd be two twenty yeah. minus one seventy five, and that option would be roughly forty five dollars. Yeah. So yeah, so roughly. Uh, so as long as it go higher than one seventy five, and by June I'm I'm good. No, you because value. you yeah, have you have value. the premium you paid. You paid two thousand dollars, so you need twenty plus one seventy five is your break even. Oh, so about it has because remember you spend two thousand dollars, right? Yeah, so I have to go to one ninety five or yep, one more one ninety five. Yep, to to be to be at your break even, right? So that would be your break even point. Ah, one night. Yeah, yeah. I have to get to one ninety five or more in order Unless to break even. 
Yes, so if it doesn't if it doesn't go one ninety five, or yeah, I'm screwed. Yes, but depends on when it moves, right? So yeah. if you just bought it today, yeah, and the stock moved today, your option is going to gain value today, right? So yeah. you could close for a profit today. Let's say Tesla goes up ten points. Yeah, your option could go up like two hundred dollars. Yeah, and you, you could take that two hundred dollars and go buy lunch. You don't have to hold it the whole time. You could sell it for a profit whenever it wow. sees fit you. You don't yeah. have to wait until the option expires. You can sell at any time. Yeah. Same with the buyer. Same with the seller. When the seller sells the option, if he's up to a, if he's up at a profit, he can close it out early. He doesn't have to wait until it expires, right? Like how Jay waits until Friday. Mm -hmm. Remember, he doesn't have to wait until Friday. He can yeah. roll the calls into yeah. something else. So both sides have things they can do. They don't have to wait until expiration. This is interesting. I think this is the first time, you know, I've been doing cover call, but I'm doing on the seller side. And, and, uh, but this is on the buy side. Okay. When, when you do this, you don't, you, I don't own any of the stocks, you know, because if I buy the contract 175 here, I just own the contract, but I don't own any stocks. Yes. I spent $2,000 to own this contract. Is but remember, right? once you spend that 2000 yeah. it, it has time decay, right? So you still have time decay and everything. Yeah. Right? Theta, remember, time decay, the option loses value every day. Yeah. So all these factors are working against you, so you better be right unless your 2000 is gone. Now, this is interesting because essentially, if you don't have any money but you want to play Tesla... You don't have to own because you're not owning the stock. You're just owning the contract. You spend two thousand dollars to own this contract, and if this thing go up to one ninety five by June twenty first, or or more, you, you know, uh, you pretty much gonna make money. You and as I said, you don't have to wait until then. If Tesla goes up yeah. five points tomorrow, you're gonna be already up probably two hundred dollars. So why don't more people play this then? A lot of people play it. Oh. But remember, you have to be right. So if, it's not like stock where you can hold on to your SoFi shares for six months, right? Yeah. That contract has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. So if you're not right, that contract is going to zero. Just like how Max sell the weekly calls. If Tesla doesn't go past the calls, those calls expire worthless. Yeah. It's the same thing. So how do you protect yourself? You just you. you uh, oh, as a buyer, you you either sell and take the loss, or you don't buy at all. Oh. There's no protection for a buyer. <laughs> this is this is interesting. I, I'm learning so much on the buyer side. I have no idea. I I I, I learn a lot. Of, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Claude. No, what I was going to say was. Uh... There's something that you can do to somewhat protect. So in the example there, you buy the option at, and follow me, Kenny, when I say this, mm -hmm. you buy the option at $20.40. That's the, uh, yeah, that's the ask price, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's say you go down to the 185 and you sell that one, $15.70. So basically what happens is, you bought in $15.70 of income to offset the $20.40 that you paid into it. And what's that's known as that's known as a debit spread. Hmm. <clears throat> so what we got is $20.40 minus $15.70. Now, what has happened, instead of you having $2,040 invested in a bullish move in Tesla, you now have $4.70 invested in a bullish move in Tesla. Okay. So you can either pay the 2000 or you can kind of cap your profit. Mm -hmm. And pay four seventy, four hundred and seventy dollars. So you can profit off that bullish move either way. Either you pay it out all out front, 
all up front or you use another option to finance that that position and that's known as a debit spread okay does does anybody else have question for Kenny and Claude? I think um, I got enough to to absorb uh, the juice here uh, for now. But uh, does anybody have any question for him? Because these are the things I always want to know, but I didn't. You know, I didn't, there was nobody to talk to about it. Uh, I, I still have one more. I still have a couple more questions for him, but I don't want to monopolize all the time. This is a great time if you want to know about option trading. Talk to these guys here about uh, any any question about option trading. Uh, so uh, this is a good time to ask them. Uh, William, it looked like you unmute your mic. Go ahead. Yeah, could uh, would they mind explaining a cash secure uh, cash secure put? And I'll just uh, mute and listen. Okay. So for a cash secure put, Tesla right now is at 175. In order to sell a cash secure put on Tesla, you choose a strike. So if we choose the 175 strike, that means each option is 100 shares. So that 175, you have to multiply it by 100, which turns into 17,500. So you have to have 17,500 in your account, and your broker is going to take that cash and secure the trade, and you're able to sell the put. So a cash secure put is you have enough cash to be able to sell, to buy those shares if those shares get assigned to you. So that is what a cash secure put is. It's the same thing as selling a put. It's just you have full cash. You're not using margin. You have full cash to secure it. So it depends on your level of option trading. Your broker might only allow you to do cash secure puts. That means you have to have the full 17000 to be able to sell this put. Did that explain? Did that? Do you understand that explanation? Uh, yes, I do. I just uh, I just wanted to make sure that I was thinking about it correctly and um, the, what the dangers and the uh, and the uh, benefits of it if, of doing it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the dangers and benefits is you're at the risk of the stock. So if the stock goes down, you lose money. If the stock goes up, you make money. That is the danger and the risk of it. Right. So you have your thesis and you sell the option based on your thesis. So if you don't want to sell 175, you could sell a 150 a month out. So you're only putting up 15,000 instead of 17,500, but you're going to get less premium because as you look at Khmer screen, you can see the 175 is going for 650. If he scrolls down, we can probably see what the 160 is going, the 150 is going for. Scroll down, the the other strikes. Can you see the other strikes down there? You should be uh, able to see them up on your up the other way, other way. Oh. There's not an up thing. I don't see an up. Well, no, oh, it's just limit can. right now. Oh, here we go. Nope, there you go. So look at 150. Nope. Let, you let just me go to March H. No, no, you went to March H. There's no money there, so we have to go go down a month. Go down, go down, come here. You got to go down to like a month's work. All right. So we can get some money in there. So so March 28th? Yep. Let's look at March 28th. And let's look at the 150 in there. There we go. So for the 150, you're only getting a dollar. While for the 175, you're getting $700. Right? So the, you're not going to get $700 if you're only putting up 15000 While I'm putting it up, I'm putting up 17500 because I'm selling the 1750 You're taking less risk than me, so you're going to get less money. You understand what I'm saying there? Yes, I understand that part. Yes, so that is the, the sense of it is yes, you're securing the trade with cash, and then the premium is based on the amount of risk that you're taking. 
Okay, thank you. Yep. Anybody else have a question for for these gentlemen? If not, I have a question. Um, I don't know if this, it's, it's probably aligned in the same subject. So you hear people in our Discord talk about this all the time. Uh, if you sell put, I don't know if it's buy or sell, but if you, in other words, they say if you sell put, you can own the stock. You know, like they say, because I always, just, I only, I always do the, the traditional way. I just buy stock limit order. But then it, there's people in the comment section, they always say, why don't you sell put so you can own the stocks and then you get premium from that? What do they mean by that? Can you, they mean buy the put or sell the put, I guess. So you're selling the put. When you sell the put, you get that premium, right? You see that? Yeah. But so now I own if the stock he, too. So if he decides that he wants to buy Tesla at 150, Tesla is not at 150, right? So yeah. he's like, okay, I will only buy at 150. So he's not going to sell the one. No, don't move it. Don't move it. Oh, okay. he, he's going to sell the 170. He, he doesn't want to sell the 170 put because he only has 15,000. Make it easier. He only has 15,000 in his account. Yeah. So he can only sell the 150 put. So he's like, I only got 15,000 to buy Tesla. I'm only buying at 150. So he's going to sell that 150 put and if Tesla doesn't come to 150, he keeps that $100 and he does it again next month. So every month he's going to keep selling that 150 put until Tesla comes to 150 and that's it. Like that's all he's selling cuz that's all his account can do. So he's just collecting that premium while he's waiting for Tesla to come down to 150. Is that is that what you do? You you Yeah, that's that's what I do. Yes. All right. I I'm, I'm going to come back to ask that question, but okay, how do I own the stock? That's that's really my original question when I first came. Okay, so using March 8, I want to own the stock this Friday. Like I want I want to own it. So you sell a put based on what price you want to, what price you, so, so, so you say you want to own it. This is a good price. I want to buy it right now at this price, 175 50 cents. So you'd, you'd sell the 175 put. So I just sell this put right here. Yes. And but then, there's no guarantee the stock will go down, but if it goes down, you're buying it at 175 Okay. But if, if I, if I sell at 177 which is a little bit $2 more, I'm probably going to get it because the current price is 175 there's no probability, right? There's a probability, yeah. You say probability, but this, again, the stock can go up. Okay. Right. So if the stock goes up, you ain't getting it. Okay. But if it stay one seventy five by Friday, I will get, I will get it. But I, I will, I will own it at one seventy seven price, plus the three forty. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, now I understand. So this is what what people are talking about. Say, since you're gonna buy a hundred share anyway, why don't you just sell put? That's what I mean. That's what they mean. You're buying essentially at the price, at the current price of it. Now, is there advantage to wait until Friday or vice is today or buy Monday or Tuesday? Like, if no, nope. is it gonna it's, be cheaper, more expensive, or? Uh, so the the options will be less valuable because there's less day of trading left. Okay, so tomorrow this thing this thing this one seventy seven here may come down to two twenty or. Yeah, but if it's in the money by certain price, it's gonna be the value of the option is gonna have real money, because that option is in the money by two dollar thirty right now. Yeah. You see that. Yeah. Right, because we're at seventy seventy five twenty. Yeah. So that option, sh the the real money value is two thirty, but the premium is the other one ten. Where did you get the one ten? I'm sorry, I missed that. So it's valued at three forty, right? right? That option you're looking at is valued at three forty. Yep. That option is in the money by two twenty, correct? Oh, okay, yeah, yep. So if you minus two twenty from three forty, how much is left? Uh, 120. Yeah. 120, yep. So, so the premium on that option is 120 because the real money is 220. Because uh, it's in the money by 220, right? Yeah. It's in the money by 220. So if you take away the in the money value, then the premium value is 120. Yeah. So it will all, that option will always have that 220 value if it's in the money by 220. 
and the premium is going to decay over time. So, so by Friday, the option is going to be trading at the real price. So if everything stays where it's at, the option is going to lose that 120 and only be valued at 220 Friday at four o'clock. Uh, because right all now the premium, it's 40, but by yep. Friday it's going to lose its value. It's going to go to 220. It's going to go to the real value of the the option where it's in the money because all the premium is going out. Mm -hmm. So remember when Jay say he's so, going to hold on to the options until the premium comes out. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. You'll also hear this term time value yeah. or extrinsic value. That's what Kenny's talking about. And this is time value. Yes. The 120 is called time value. All right. Right, because that's the amount of t that's the value of the amount of time that's left. So, if you want to own this Tesla stock at the money price, the best time to buy it is actually when you want to buy it. There's no like, it. there's no specific best time, whatever it is. Well, if you want to get the most premium out of it. I mean, yeah, you want to get as much premium for to sell it, sell it for yes. But you don't know the direction the stock is gonna go. Yeah. So you just buy it at one seventy five uh, on Monday, for example. You would get probably five hundred dollars for that. And and then and then you just hope for the best. If it go, if it go if it go lower, then I will own it. If it go higher, then I you will keep, I keep all the premium. I keep all the premium. That is interesting. Why this stuff is so complicated? Watch, I'm gonna like. I, I guess the only way to do it is you got to keep doing it. You got to keep playing with it. You know, it's interesting. All right, this is interesting. Now, there's a there's a lot of stocks out there. You cannot own a hundred share because they don't have option chain. Uh, they just don't have option chain. But most stock have option chain. So this is the best way to own one of the best way to own a stock. You want to own the stock anyway, might as well sell put at the price you want to buy it, and then you collect the premium. If it go below that strike price, you will own it because you want to buy it anyway. But if it doesn't, then you you get to do it again next week. Now, the only the only sucky part is you don't own the stock because you the reason you buy it, you want to own the stock. But, but then you might have to adjust your price to me a little higher so you can own it you know you don't have to own it like you can just collect the premium every week yeah just collect the right? premium yeah so you could sell that 150 put every month and just collect the premium over and over over and over okay uh smindle has a questions uh smindle go ahead yeah i just came in so i wanted to know if they talked about the uh, reserve so when you when you sell a put they also reserve as if you would have you know you will be purchasing it so yes your, your broker does that so you have to have in this case if you do the 175 you have to have seventeen thousand five hundred dollars either in cash or in, if it's marginable they'll take it out of your margin correct Dr. Booger, Dr. Booger asks, uh, this might be a dumb question, but what if it's go up and I miss it, then goes down? Is there a way for me to set it to sell at a certain price? Yes, you can do a limit price to sell an option. Right? You can do a limit price to sell an option. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's try it's it. However you want to set up the trade. Yeah, so you... Uh, you go to call, uh, sell to open, uh, one, well, in this case, you want to go, let's say 175. It's 175 right now. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so let's say 177. All right. So I'm just going to hit continue here. And and where is the limit yeah right here here's the limit order type limit yep so so let's say you want to sell that options to three dollars so you increase the value to three dollars 
And the only way that's going to fail is if Tesla goes down. Because then if Tesla goes down, what's that, a call? Oh, it's a call. It's so a if call. Tesla goes up, then this call will be will get, gain value. And if Tesla keeps going up, it will go up to $3. And then the option would get filled. Somebody would buy the option from you. And you're in the trade. Yeah, so this is a call situation. Uh, a call and sell, a uh, call sell. It, is that is that the question he was asking? No, he he wanted to know like if you could set a limit to to sell an option, and yes, you can set a limit. Yeah, that's what he has. If he's not right if he's not sitting there watching it, or if he's working a full time job, and you know he wants to hit a pro, he wants a certain profit from it. When he's not looking at it, yeah, by all means, like Kenny said, set you a standing GTC order so that when you're not watching it, it'll execute for you in the dark. All right. Uh, let's see. Any, anybody else want to ask questions? On... Go ahead and unmute your mic if you want to ask some question. I mean, there's, at this point, there's no stupid answer, I guess. Because I think I asked all the dumb one already. <laughs> all right. I'll give you all a chance to uh, ask some questions. So, uh, now, Kenny, how how do you play this? Uh, now we get into the tactics and strategy on on how you play this. So, Obviously, you're like the our end goal. You know, we're at the beginner. We're at level one, and you're level eighty, and uh, and we're trying to get to your level. And instead of running around, you know, doing small stuff, we want to know how you do it, get to that level, so this way we can focus our energy on it some way. So if you go to next week, which would be the the week of the, what fourteen or fifteen? Yeah, fifteen. Yep. Okay. All right. So. Scroll, scroll to where the stock's at right now, and I'm looking for $150. So scroll to, um, yeah, you pass, you pass it. All right, so I'm looking for $150. So I would be selling around the 165 put for next week or the 160. That's what I would be looking to sell for Tesla for next week. You're at like 155. I'm saying 165. All right. I'm looking for $150. Like Jay looks for $250, I look for $150. Oh, okay. That's so the $150 looking. right here. Yep, that's what I'll be looking for. So when I sell this $150 put, basically, if I get a sign, I will be buying Tesla 10 points lower than where it's at today. If Tesla doesn't, if it, if Tesla doesn't finish down there, I keep the $150. For me, with my broker, I don't need to put up seventeen thousand because I'm on margin. I would only put up like three thousand for this trade. So, okay. So explain this. Let's see. If I can understand this. So you 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 buy this contract. Sell, you, sell, sell, sell. Okay. You selling this contract uh, for well, one fifty. One fifty. Yep. And. Essentially, three thousand or sixteen thousand. Let's just not talk about yep. margin. Yep, yep. Sixteen thousand dollar went into a holding. Yep. And, and now you can't use that money for anything else. But sixteen thousand dollars in this holding. Next yep. week, if this price on Friday uh, stay at one seventy five or higher, you will keep that one hundred fifty dollar. Yes. If this so, price go down to one fifty or uh, one sixty five or lower. You I will have to screen. buy it. You have to buy it. Yes. So let's say, uh, let's say tomorrow Elon comes out with his new jet that's going to the moon, yeah. and Tesla goes to one eighty-five. Yeah. And this option is trading at twenty cents. So I can buy the option back and close the trade, and be done with it. So now I made one thirty in less than a day because remember if yeah. this is a put so if the stock goes up the put is going to lose value okay the put gains value when the stock goes down correct yeah so if the stock goes up the put is going to lose value 
If the put lose value, I can get out of the put and and, and finish the trade. I don't have to wait until next week Friday. Yeah. So when you sell a put, it is a bullish stance you're taking. When you sell a call, it is a bearish stance you're taking. Huh. Because you're saying the stock is not going there. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, Tesla right now is doing a little sell action. Uh, hmm. It's sitting at 175 right now. And... And you you thinking it's gonna keep come? Uh, you think it's gonna go back up? So therefore, you can go one sixty five, and you're fine. Okay. So what happened if you you have the stock now at one sixty five? What do you do with it? I'm gonna sell a call. And you do the opposite of that. You're gonna sell the yes. call. Yes, I'm gonna sell a call. And how much would you sell a call for? For uh, I'm selling it right at the money. I want to get out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be be uh, playing around because I don't want to sit sit around with the stock longer. I want so, to sell a call. So and on get March fifteen, you would try to sell at one sixty five. That will be thirteen dollars and twenty cents. Well, it won't be because we are at the money. That thirteen dollars is in the money. Oh, okay. Based on what you're seeing, so it would be worth around five hundred dollars. Yeah, Look at the one seventy five right now. Yeah, what is so it going it's right for? Here, yeah. yeah, it's going for six, right? So yeah. in a week time, it would decay. So it would be going for like five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So I would sell that for five hundred dollars. And my thesis is we go up and I collect my 500. All right, just go and back and forth. It. Yeah, you're just wheeling it. It's called a wheel. So so how do you lose in this situation? The stock keeps going down. The same way how you, you lose on any other things where the stock just keeps going down. Oh, yeah. So if the stock goes down and you, 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 you have the stock now, and you put for one sixty five. Nobody gonna buy it because it's it's still going down. Yep. And so then, at this point, you you might as well just hold it then, huh? Yeah, you're in a holding position. You can sell, you can sell calls. You're just not gonna get a lot of money for it, unless you're selling calls below your strike, which is like your synthetic. It's like when Yield Max is selling below their synthetic. Yeah. It's the same thing. So if I'm selling below one sixty five. It's just like when Yield Max is selling below their synthetic. You're taking a loss then. You're taking a loss if you get called away. So you can't be as aggressive as Jay is. Yeah. Because right, so. I don't have to pay a dividend, so I don't have to be that aggressive. Yeah. All right. That's interesting. Wow. I, l I learned a lot, guys. Uh, th this is some very useful conversation. Um all right, let me go back to uh, Discord. Does anybody else want to jump in and ask some question? Uh, because I think he uh, he answered all my question. That I'm I'm just like uh, I'm I'm gonna experiment and play with puts. F for whatever reason, I thought you have to buy, but no, I'm just selling put. I'm not. I'm selling call and selling put. I'm still on the seller side of the trade. I'm not on the buyer side. Correct. You don't have to. You don't have to sell. You don't have to buy. You can sell. Okay. Right. All right, this is interesting. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, you guys literally answered my question. I, uh, I'm i going to stop playing and experiment with this. I like this strategy. Now, now, is there any particular stock that you play with? Like, I know you play that QQQ and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I, I stick with the index. And um, right now, I'm in a less volatile motion. So I don't like, I don't want to mess with stocks that will just sell off you know, 10 points in a day like Tesla does. Yeah. So uh, I tend to stay away from the ones that are very aggressive right now. Um, so we got news coming out tomorrow, so I won't touch anything until after um, the news comes out in the morning, and then um, I'll look to sell some puts. Uh, what news? Um, tomorrow's that. You the, the, have Chairman Powell speaking tomorrow, oh. and... There's calendar stuff, so the market loves to run around when Paul's talking. That is true. That's true. Now, Kamir. Yeah. You have Thinkorswim. Mm -hmm. Thinkorswim has a paper trading portion of the of the uh, platform. Yeah. Highly recommend using that to experiment with your options. And anybody, anybody in this Discord. 
if your platform has a paper trading uh, portion to the actual platform itself, I highly recommend utilizing that because that serves two purposes. You can see, you can learn the mechanics and you can see and feel out how options move. And two, you get easier familiar, you get, you get familiar with your actual platform and where you need to be clicking and uh, to, to actually execute these transactions. And if you need to, if you don't have access to a paper trade, an old fashioned pencil and paper can be just as good. Write down what it is you want to buy and then you can track it over time. Yeah. But I highly recommend to uh, do something along those lines first before you start dabbling in with your actual money. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I I, I appreciate it, guys. This is I I, I learned so much uh, just just today alone. Um, I hope everybody else gets to learn. Hey, before I let them go here. Uh, well, I mean, they can go anytime. It's just before we say goodbye, uh, and if you, this is it, this is your last, you know, well, it's not last. I mean, this is online. You can meet them anytime. But <laughs> unless, unless Kenny's been really busy, Kenny, you, you everything okay with you? I'm, I'm gonna stop the yeah, recording here. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got work and stuff. I'm yeah. back in Connecticut now, so oh, I got full time work and all that stuff. And um, yeah, this, this trying to focus on what I'm doing with this because I only got so much time yeah. uh, when I get home before the market close. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric want to say something? Uh, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, hey, I thought Jerome spoke today. Um, yeah, but, you know, he it's was a in a congressional hearing. It's a marathon, he was... man. Yeah, yeah, he's out here, man. Oh, I think okay. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he's talking tomorrow, but we got, let me look up the eco e economic calendar. Yeah. Because I thought he did a, a a meeting today with Congress. It was like three hours. I was like, dude. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's the next like three days. Yeah, yeah. He's out here, man. Um. So today's what Wednesday. So tomorrow yeah. we have jobless claims, and then Powell comes on at nine o'clock. So jobless claims at eight thirty, oh. and tomorrow, and then Powell comes on at nine thirty, man. Yeah, he's out here yeah. rocking the markets, man. Yeah, he. Um, I was in a lot of the markets that um, you know, require you know the interest to be reduced. Uh, you know, the interest rates to be reduced and everything I held was just getting destroyed. And so I said, you know what, until he stops talking, I'm getting out of this, you know, and I got into, you know, some of the crypto plays. And every time he speaks, the crypto market just goes up or everything that's associated with crypto just goes to the roof. So I'm like, all right, cool. I will ride this pony until I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, so tomorrow morning we'll have we have those two events tomorrow. So um, I shorted the future. I'll see what it looks like when I wake up in the morning, and I I'm probably gonna take it off before the jobless stuff comes on, because the market can go up or down off that big time. Yeah. Um, and. That's well. That's it. Um, you guys got any 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 question? Anything? Just at me. Um, even though I'm at work, I can I can reply to your stuff. Um, but you'll get a reply before the day's over usually. Yeah. Uh, my 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 uh, all my free time is gone now because I'm at work and stuff. All so right. that's just what it is. All right, guys. Yeah, well, hey, to... thank you all for coming and hanging out. And, you know, uh, Discord and Cla uh, Claude and Huff and all these guys. There's other people here, too. I, I, I just can't, you know, there's just so many of them. Uh, there's an option trading section. You could just post a question there. Uh, you could you can try build, uh, buy, sell something, and then, uh, uh, you know, sell your options. And then you can test it out and, you know, take a screenshot and, Ask them what their opinion is, you know. Uh, that's what a lot of the guys are doing when they're starting out. Uh, now, like I said at the beginning of the monologue, is that, you know, 
the reason we want to learn option trading is just because our underlying stocks, a lot of our underlying stock, they make money based on, I'm sorry, not underlying, the, 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 the high yield dividends that we invest in, they make their money on option trading. And uh, so it's good to know how they do it. And the only way to know how they do, do it, you have to like experiment here. And that's essentially how they do it. And, and that's how they make money. And that's how they collect premium for us. Yeah, I want to say hey, thank you, Claude, Hoff, and uh, and Kenny for hanging out with us. We we always uh, we always welcome you. We appreciate you. We love you here. Uh, yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate yeah. you guys. You're more than welcome. All right, more than welcome.